Aaron Bronstetter did a little report. Jake Paul's got a boxing match coming up. And Aaron was just talking about, hey, listen, this isn't a real small venue. Smallest venue Paul's ever competed in. 3,000 is what it seats. It's about half full. Having a real hard time getting interest in moving tickets. So Jake spoke to it. Jake said, I don't care. I love to box. I, I just want to box. You guys are talking about the crowd and the money and the business. I don't care. I want to compete. I think I can be a world champion. So that's interesting by both, right? It's, it's, it's very interesting because we have wondered over here at Bad Guy Inc. many times, should Jake Paul be listening to the audience? There is nobody that knows what they want less than the MMA audience, than the boxing audience. They could not sit down and write you and design and design you, this is what I want. If you brought it to them, they're not guaranteed to give a damn. They don't know what they want. So it's your job as the smartest guy in the room to bring them something. In, in reverse order, see, right? You don't ask them what they want and then bring it to them. You create it. You tell them you want this and you put that in their face and they'll eat it up. And when Jake genuinely was trying to pursue the respect and the recognition, the greatness, the accomplishment, when that all became really sincere, or at least when he made that obvious to us, is when he did start changing and stepping up competition. And one of the things, regardless of the business and how great everything had been, one of the statements that continues to come back is that Jake needs to fight an actual boxer, a current today competitive boxer. And I remember seeing that and thinking, boy, I hope he doesn't ever take those people's advice. There's nothing the people are telling Jake he needs to do that if he does, will help them. Like, they're not going to come along and support him just because he now has done what they said he needs to do. They're not going to be more amped up. They're not more likely to buy a ticket. They're not more likely to buy a t-shirt. They're not even more likely to go to social media and say something nice about you. They will then use the fact that you did that to say, I don't even know who this person is and I don't have interest. There, there's nothing that you can do within getting the opinion of them telling you what it is they want that will ever work. And I, I was just curious how Jake was going to do that. I don't deny his sincerity. There's some things that are statements, right? If you don't sell any tickets, you got to say, I don't care if I sell tickets. Like, there is good, solid PR, and he's a master of doing good, solid PR. The problem with boxing is if it's not doing something that's a sustainable from a revenue standpoint, it stops happening. You don't get the next match and the next match. There is not a competitiveness towards a world championship. There is a politicalness towards a world championship. And if that's the one that you're pursuing and you get to it, come hook or crook, you've got it done. I want to tell you, Shawn Michaels was a better pro wrestler than the Brooklyn Brawler when Shawn won world championships and the Brawler never won a match. I mean, how would, how would I do that? There, there's a script. That it's, it's pure poli 100 politics, 100% politics. I wouldn't know which one knew a better drop quick or a suplex. They're not being judged on that. That isn't the criteria. Some people said Hulk Hogan didn't know the difference between a wrist lock and a wrist watch. So if you go into an industry that is fully based on politics and you learn the politics of it, good for you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't begrudge that. I would just always wonder if, if you were sincerely, you just wanted to box. Now, I don't care about them. I don't care. I want to box. Well, there's a way to do it. And there's a way that's also respected. And there's a way where you can become a world champion and nobody will question it. And that's to the amateur ranks. Now you're going you're gonna to be out there, you're going to be fighting 16-year-olds, you're going to be fighting 18-year-olds, right? we got the Olympic Games coming up in Paris. Everybody that just loves to box and just wants to do it thinks they're so great. Everybody can enter it. The other side of it, there isn't going to be the showcase, there isn't going to be the money. And more than anything, if you're not that good at it, you're going to get beat up by children. 14, 17, 19, 21, that's it. That's the age group of the guys that are going to pursue that and try to do it. So that, that's just where things start to be interesting. If you have somebody who just really loves boxing, just loves boxing, do you love doing it when people are watching? Do you love doing it for crowds? Do you just love being in front of a guy and trying to do the skills, or did you enjoy the walkout? Did you enjoy the interviews? Did you enjoy the hype, the buildup, all of the press, going to the gym and having cameras there? 
Nobody owes me an answer to this question. I'm just suggesting for you that if you really love something, there's a way to do it. If you want to be world champion, instead of entering something that has all of the politics. It's a fascinating spot. It's a fascinating question. And I don't know the gentleman that Jake's taking on. He has a record of 10 and 1 in actual boxing. I, I don't know the benefit to fighting him. I just feel like Jake is going to go and fight him because he satisfies the criteria that so many people have said Jake must satisfy a criteria for. And as I start to look at this, right, guys, everything parlays over into PFL. Everything. There's only been two fighters ever, Oscar De La Hoya and Mike Tyson, who could draw on their own. I admit that list needs amended. It would need to add Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather. Ever that could compete and fight and draw on their own. We thought Tyson Fury might be one of those guys. We found out two weeks ago, no, it's a very rare list and Tyson's not on it. So as it pertains to the PFL, which Jake has never done, assuming that we're going to have an attraction, assuming that he's got, he's got a, a base and fans and followers and supporters who are willing to come along the journey, one of the hardest things in the world to do, it's one of the reasons when, when you see an athlete that wants to become a rapper, it doesn't matter if Shaq did it or Roy Jones Jr. did it, nobody came along because that wasn't the deal. The deal was never that I will back you and I will support you, and I'll even allow you to go out and publicly call your name Dwayne. No, your name's going to be The Rock. That's the one we like. And this is the exchange. You do what we want, right? It's one of these interesting spots. So as you go over the PFL, it would show you how important that opponent is. We're seeing that within boxing, and I think that we've always understood that. But every now and then, we do need a reminder. And every now and then, we've got to check the system. He is a guy on his accomplishments, on his interest, on the history that he did, on his backstory, with a base. Is, is he big and good enough to come over here and bring... That base, it's always been challenging. But there are a few of the special ones and the great ones that can navigate it and find a way to do it. Jake Paul would seem to me as safe of a bet in a very risky industry as anybody. I would think Jake Paul coming over to MMA, I, for me, that's interesting. But Jake Paul within boxing, while I've watched a lot of matches, I didn't watch Tommy Fury. I'm on the other side of the chorus. I'm not as interested in Jake going out there with actual boxers. That's not as fun for me. I had more fun with the Ben Askren. I had more fun with Anderson Silva. I had my most fun with Nate Diaz. I liked that trajectory. Like George Masvidal was becoming available. Or maybe we change that formula just slightly that packed the house and did a million dollar plus game. Maybe we change that just slightly and we, we keep with the MMA theme, but we find somebody active as opposed to retired. It would just seem as though we would stay within that direction. But it's not as though Jake is caught with his pants down. If they sold half the tickets, but it's a 3,000 seat venue, that means Jake and his team knew what they were looking at. Looks like they did a pretty good business assessment ahead of time to book a 3,000 seat venue. They had a good idea, which does lend towards the notion that Jake just loves to compete and he just loves to box. But as it comes over to MMA and what are we going to do and who are we going to do it with, I think that at a minimum, based on the information that we have, at a minimum, we can agree the opponent matters.